highlight of the day's football. We hope you enjoy the new time slot for your Saturday night replay. Well, tonight, as mentioned, those two games for replay. Also, fabulous footy fa flashbacks. And we look at matches in round one from seasons gone by. And later on, we'll have our super snoop, Scotty Palmer, in here to bring us up to date with all the news from the first day of football for the season. So after all the fanfare and the build-up, the season finally underway, and we begin the replay tonight with uh, the two teams who played in last year's grand final, Carlton and Hawthorne. Well, for the Blues, since they won the flag, things had gone decidedly wrong. They had players suspended in that match in London last year, players injured during the pre-season, and also they'd hardly won a pre-season match, including a defeat by Richmond last year's Wooden Spooners in the Panasonic Cup competition. Well, having lost nearly all their practice games, well, they couldn't go into the match looking much worse. They're up against Hawthorne, who last week won the Panasonic Cup, the night competition, and had a full-strength team and were looking really good. But whether after Carlton unfurled their premiership flag, it inspired them or not, but it was a terrific tussle at Prince's Park. 27,000 people were there. Tonight, we're going to show the last quarter, but firstly, highlights from the first three quarters. And out there in front of the big crowd, the commentators Sandy Roberts, Ian Robertson and Malcolm Blight. Cedar and Bacanara's there. He's got a player loose. Out wide, Dixon, with a little bit of space. Back to Bacanara. Inside 50 metres, he fumbles. Back to Dixon. Dixon goes for goal and puts it through for the Hawks. Showed some strength. He doesn't look that strong, but he certainly got rid of Curran then. Another player who's been really severely hurt by injury. And there's a fine mark coming over the top by Langford. Harding's kicked towards half forward. High flyers again at the back. Here's a chance for Platten. He'll outrun Aitken. Forced to kick with the left foot close to the boundary line. Snap shot's not bad. Great kick by Platten's a goal. It did be a Domenico a chance. In trouble. Schwab almost caught flat footed but recovers well. Goes in towards full forward. Brereton is there. One grab. Can't take it. Does fall with a little left foot. Chip puts it through. Here's well tackled, handball away, Schwab well tackled by Blackwell, ball and half forward, good play by the Blues, Murphy to Bradley, Bradley from 40 metres directly in front, kicks a goal for Carlton. So too Silvani, a floating flat looking drop punt, plenty of flyers, Silvani waits down and goals. Strength with Dippier Domenico, needing support, getting it from Platten, Hawthorne are clear, will he get away? A high kick in towards full forward. Dunstall. Oh. Two bounces. Slight stammer. Then goes with a drop punt. Gernahan trying to get front spot. What a mark! Silvani going back into the pack. But he does. The drop punt. Now it's going across the face. Brereton and buffered it out. Waiting down was Hall. Socket to Platten. And this time, his goal has support from Green. A long hand pass to Bacanara. Another one to Dixon. Tries to change the tide a little. Eventually goes back towards Bacanara. He can kick these. Look at that for a kick for goal. And Hawthorne is back in business again. Harding wins it wide. Could be dangerous. Taken by Silvani. A snap at goal. It's a beauty. What a great goal. So this was the situation after the first three quarters. The Blues led by three points at quarter time, six points at half time. Hawthorne kicked three goals, 11 in the third quarter. If they hadn't done that, they might have led at the last change. But the Blues were still in front by eight points at three-quarter time. And we pick up the, the whole of the last quarter. And once again, here's the action as uh, the grand final replay took place to start the season. Scene is set for a great final quarter. Carlton go into the last term with an eight-point advantage. Hawthorne kicking to the end that is favoured by the breeze that has dropped marginally. Who will be first to score? Naley gets the first kick. Immediately stopped, however, by Langford, who goes long up towards the half-forward line, only to see Dean intercept. Can go out wide. Shine, wearing the number 10 Guernsey, is there for Carlton. Hugging the boundary line, he goes towards the half-forward line. Naley couldn't take it, but socketed off the ground. Gained valuable metres. Here's David Kernahan. Plenty of pressure on him. The crowd calling for holding the ball. But the umpire decides to come in and have a bounce. It's got to be one or the other, doesn't it? Either back or holding the ball if they're going to be consistent. Here's the bounce. Stephen Kernahan gets it. Glascott forced onto the left foot. Danger here. 
One grab mark. Wayne Blackwell will shoot from directly in front, just 25 metres out. Well, this end was not kind to Hawthorne in the last quarter. Once again, uh, Tippier Domenico reaching for the football rather than just thumping an arm. I mean, it's quite legal. Blackwell from directly in front. The drop punt on its way. The Carlton flag's got He goal. When you look around Victoria at the start of every day, you'll find someone there to help you, someone with you all the way. Because when it comes to your insurance, there's a name you need to know. They're safe and sure and they care for you more than the S-I-O. Haven't they done a terrific job? Good as new. When I think of what it looked like after the fire, maybe we should think about changing to SIO. Take it from me, they're okay. With SIO Home Insurance, it costs only $158 to insure this $60,000 house. Australians love a race. And Australians love their beer. Foster's, flavour with a big capital F. There's nothing like it, is there? That's true. Australia loves a Foster's. the 1988 Homemaker Show at the Exhibition Building. It's a spectacular home show of new ideas. It's the home show of furniture and furnishings. It's the home show for home improvers and renovators. It's Australia's biggest home show for wood heaters. The 1988 Homemaker Show. Worth making a song and dance about. On now at the Exhibition Building. Here's Munro's latest shock tactic. Have your worn shock absorbers replaced with Munro GT gas shockers and we'll give you a voucher for up to $30, redeemable on any other servicing your car may need. But hurry. Mr. Okamura is paying a visit to a new NEC dealership. He's here to tell them something about NEC's remarkable range of computers. How NEC make everything from laptops to desktops, mainframes to huge supercomputers. And as you can see, he ends his little talk with the traditional visit to the golf course. <laughs> NEC, Japan's most experienced computer company, now very much at home in Australia. When you go to prison, first, there's the medical. Now you see those flowers over there? I want you to fill one for me. What, from here? <laughs> then, get to know your new friends. I'm only here due to tragic circumstances. Oh? No? Which were? I got caught. Learn yeah. new skills. By the time he come out, he was a brilliant forger. Oh, brilliant. He only went in for reckless driving. And listen to some good advice. Unless you think about women, the better. Cool, blimey, look at her. Ronnie Barker in Porridge plus Penelope Keith into The Manor Born starts Thursday on 7. Confident Blues also leaving Dean at centre-half back on Bacchanara. And uh, interesting, Hannah on Brereton. Ball at the centre. Blues break away again. Darui's quick kick to centre half forward. Punch away by Kernahan on Langford. Tuck there to pick up the crumbs. A quick kick out towards centre wing. No mark taken by Shine. The crumb gatherer. Naley. Wide hand pass. Gleason. On forward to Glascott. Forced to kick with the left foot again. Mark taken by Collins in the back pocket. Out for one, but the umpire was right on the spot. Collins, break clear, comes to the outer side. Mark taken by Dixon, back onto the right foot. Kicks it high towards centre-half forward. Dean, good punch away. Now there's a chance for Schwab. Loose handball. Aitken over the back, looking for a teammate. No one there. Green over the back. A flip to Hall. Hall back to Green. Green's handball finds Bacchanara from 20 metres. And Bacchanara's kick may have been hooked too far. No, it hasn't. It's a goal. And that's the uh, third goal to Bacchanara, the 11th to Hawthorne, and the difference again is eight points.
just wondering at the preparation of these two sides as we really get down to the business end. Hawthorne uh, have had the really hard program, whereas Carlton haven't, playing more night games than Carlton. And from that snap from Bacanara, who really was under a lot of pressure to kick it, just wondering if those extra hard games are now going to suit the Hawthorne game. Well, we know that Hawthorne can just grind away, come from behind and take a game. Is today going to be the same? From the bounce, Tuck it is. Almost handed it to Hall. Couldn't take it. Back with Tuck again. And eventually the umpire will come in and decide upon a bounce. Been nip and tuck all day. The greatest margin we've had has been 17 points. It went to Carlton, but each time they've broken away to a lead, Hawthorne has had the ability to peg it back. Kernahan. Been many great duels on the ground. This has been one of them. Harms doing the leading. Silvani the flyer. Can't take the mark. Glass got through. Did it come off a knee? And we will see a throw. I don't know whether the umpire knew himself that he <laughs> seemed to seem to call a free and then thought, hang on, I better not do that. <laughs> Play it safe. Schwab does the ruck work. Dipier Domenico taps it wide. Naily dummies beautifully. Kicks accurately to half forward. Silvani can't take it. Murphy waiting down to Harms. Up goes the Blues. And the goal goes on the board. 14 13 97. Again, out for 14 points over Hawthorne, 11 17 83. Wasn't that a magnificent, honest jump by Silvani? And he really commits himself to the ball in the air. There it is again. He's almost grabbed that again. And great road from Fraser Murphy. And Harms kicks truly. So we've, we've got that little break again from uh, from the Hawthorne side and, and Carlton seem to be able to match them each time they kick a goal. 14 points the margin. The job is ahead of Hawthorne. Can they do it? Black will through. Carlton into attack again. Silvani from behind. Not good enough on this occasion. And Abbott has done some good aerial work today. Gets it over to Ayres. His day was tarnished by a report. Pritchard on the outer side of the ground. Platten comes from behind. Takes a good mark. A little bit of urgency coming into his play now. Aitken drops what he should have taken, and it could be costly. Schwab tackled well. Gets it across to Green. A high kick. Dunstall and Hunter. Dunstall! Well, the marking at either end of the ground has been a delight to watch. Bacanara's in trouble for Hawthorne. And that could be bad news. I see a trainer pointing to his knee. Look at that, Malcolm. What a great man. Yes, it, it's been a feast with Silvani at one end and Dunstall at the other end. All it needs is Dunstall to kick goals, finish him off. Which he has done. But that may be good news. The bad news is Bacanara. He is still down on the ground. Is in agony. Almost reminiscent of the grand final in 86 well, that uh, started the game. Wouldn't it be tragic if he's got to go through this again? Uh, just uh, moving the legs slightly at the moment. But obviously, he's in great pain. Although, I don't think if he was moving it like that, there would be... Um, you think they wouldn't be doing that at this stage, Ian? Well, he looks pretty serious. And the play is still going on, which is quite strange. Uh, when a player is so badly injured, he's limping towards the boundary line now. The umpire continues with play. The ball in the centre. A quick kick by Shine up towards half forward. Oh, what a good mark taken by David Curhan. He plays on, gives it to Naley. Naley trying to get past Ayres. He's kicking to the pocket. No mark taken. Ball runs free over the line, and we'll have a throw in 35 metres around from the Carlton goal. The scoreboard, the Blues are 97. The Hawks are 89. Eight points. Carlton's lead. Deep in Carlton's scoring area. Tap out, favours Ayres. Ayres comes clear. Long kick towards... Here's another sensational mark. Has it been paid? No, play on, says the umpire. Gee, the commitment of some of these players out in the ground today has been fantastic. Bacanara back on his feet and just testing that knee tentatively. He was about to jog off the ground, but when the ball started coming down in that area, it has stayed there. We'll wait and see what happens. Naley set up, ran into leverage, tuck, and the ball goes over the line. 
Dean was the Carlton player that nearly took a similar mark to Silvani just a few seconds earlier. But the umpire having a good look at it decided no mark and uh, here we have a boundary throw in on centre wing. Dunlop doing the ruck work. Tuck gets it out wide. Chance for Green. Green's left foot kick towards centre half forward. Brereton looking to smother. Platten taps on well. Chance for Hall. Will the bounce favour him? Hannah backs himself. The Blues might be out of trouble through Bradley. Wide kick. Gleeson leads in the race for the ball. The bounce favours him beautifully. Left foot kick. Out wide. Shine. Waits for the bounce. Player running pass was Hannah. Through centre half forward. Goes long. 65 metres to the square. Will it bounce through? It has. No, it's been touched. <laughs> Through for a behind to Carlton. Buckenara has to come off the ground, actually, yes, at the moment, by the look of it, because that was Hannah who set that whole play up because Buckenara couldn't run. So they're really, as Buckenara does come off. Yes, Buckenara's off the ground. We've got uh, just under 18 minutes remaining. It's anybody's game on the outer side of the ground with Harms and Loveridge. And a throw in to take place. Buckenara. Bad news, let's hope that uh, it's not too serious. Murphy ripped off the football but managed to get a quick kick. Collins takes it away for Hawthorne. Wide, Dippier Domenico leading in the race for the ball. Oh, what a great struggle this one is with Blackwell. And he, I think Dippier Domenico is going to lose it. Blackwell. Kernahan the target. The two Kernahan brothers flew. Schwab pulled off the ball. David Kernahan farms it out the back. A chance for Gleeson. He's clear. Can centre the football. Looking for Murphy. Mew, a great attempt to take it. Harms versus clear. On the comeback trail is Harms. He hooks it back over his shoulder, but has gone too far. And one behind only goes on the ball. The social club would have erupted. <laughs> I think the roof of the newsstand may have just about come off. He's... Uh, one of Garland's favourite sons. Kick in was taken by Tuck. Tuck's kick to the wing. Free kick paid to Shine. Shine plays on, kicks it into the centre. Dunlop on his own. Go back. No one really to kick to. And Dunlop, not a bad kick of the football. Up towards full forward. High flies. Hawthorne defence. Punch away out towards Tuck in the back pocket. Tackled by Naley, and it goes out for a boundary throw-in. The play about 35 metres around from the Carlton goal. The Blues hanging on to a 10-point advantage. 14, 15, 99, 12, 17, 89, the Hawks. Play in the forward pocket for Carlton. Umpire decides on a bounce. It's about 40 metres out from the Carlton goal as Buccanara looks a little concerned about his knee. Let's hope it's not too serious. Gary Buccanara, tremendous player in VFL football over the last few years. Langford's kick out towards half-back. Kennedy can't mark. Platten does the tackling. He flips it over to Schwab. Schwab, round the neck, says the umpire. And Peter Schwab, you're a little fortunate because I thought you ducked your head. Schwab, defensive side of centre wing. Has Jinky in support. Jinky kicks into the forward pocket area. No mark taken. Carlton defence standing firm. This time it's Dean. A looping handball to Bradley. Umpires picked the free kick out, and Bradley will take it for Carlton at half back. Against Brereton. 50 metres. It's the first one we've seen today. If you haven't seen these before, a 50 metre penalty suddenly brings the defender into the attacking zone. Bradley's long kick looking for Kernahan appeared to give a nudge. Harms couldn't get it. The hurry kick goes wide, out towards Green. He's under great pressure from Blackwell. Blackwell picks it up. The left foot high kick. Abbott is at the back. Murphy also. And the ball rolls through for one behind. Dixie Marshall's on the boundary line. What's the news regarding uh, Gary Bacanara, Dixie? even swinging it freely and is in lots of pain. The ices are being Blackwell. applied now, but uh, he doesn't look like taking any further part, Sandy. Can go short. Finding Gleeson. Short again. 
Last guy. The margin is 11 points. Just two straight kicks. Well, they're mucking around with the ball and creeping ever so closer to goal. It's fine to control the football, but now what they've got to do is make sure they score from this because a lot of time wasted in doing this. Shine. <laughs> Did not listen to Malcolm Blight and has skewed that ball off the side of the boot, out of bounds on the foot. That's almost unforgivable at this stage of the game. What a complete and utter waste of opportunity. The rest would have been impressed with something like that. Well, I would imagine that Robert Walls has been pretty impressed with that kick too. So, Loveridge, with just over 13 minutes remaining, brings the ball back into play. Dunlop heads for the boundary line. And another throw in to take place. 11 points, still anybody's game. There's the Carlton bench. Dunlop again. Dipier Dominico through. Gleason a chance now for Carl. Hooking it over the shoulder. Murphy! Couldn't take it. Collins at the bottom of the pack. Maybe free kick. And will. Yeah, there's still plenty of footy left, isn't there, Sandy? You get the impression Carlton might be leerizing. Yes, this uh, short game. Still a little too much time left, perhaps, in the game for that at the moment. But they're going forward again. The long kick from Derui is a beauty! What a goal by Derui! The new 1.8 Nissan XR. Is it a Targa? Is it a Coupe? Or is it a Cabrio? Absolutely. The new 1.8 Nissan XR. It's out of the ordinary and out of sight. Nissan Malhau. Building the right cars for Australia. <laughs> You'd think that a society capable of putting a man on the moon could do something about blasted, unexpected bills. It's no problem, really. Not with the state banking system. Ah, dude. I've got a state banking system, as it happens. But that's not going to pay the bills. It's no money. Oh, mine's got overdraft. They have pencils with digital watches in them. Eggs don't stick to frying pans anymore. Overdraft? The state banking system with overdraft to help you through life's little financial storms. Wonderful. Now from Breville comes fingertips, an amazing new do-it-yourself massager that combines the benefits of modern physiotherapy and advanced technology with the ancient art of hand massage to relieve tension or ease muscular aches and strains. Breville fingertips massager, just like having a trained masseur in the family. From Breville, the better ideas people. You get a run for your mind from the center square. Whoa, that's got to be the mark of the week. No, mate, I made the mark of the week with TAB Footy Bet. Yeah. For as little as 50 cents, you can make your mark with Footy Win, Footy Double, and for the big payout, Footy Quad. So make your mark with Footy Bet now. I did, mate, at the TAB. You get a run for your money. Run for your money. You get a run for your money on the TAB. Slowly but surely, We've watched the prices of most things climb higher and higher and higher. But this year, changes to the VFL club membership prices means that the cost of going to a VFL game has actually come down and down and down. Ask your club or the VFL about club membership tickets and don't just barrack for your club. Support it. 17 points the Blues lead by. Bounce in the centre. Dunlop. T Loveridge. Can't break clear. And the umpire will bounce again. Just over 12 minutes to go. Good punch away by Dunlop. Up towards half forward Langford. Jenky. Platten. Long kick to set a half forward. Aitken tries to punch away. Curran picks up the crumbs. Short pass is a good one. Brereton 
35 metres out directly in front. And the Hawks badly need this. This could make the difference 11 points. Then yet to kick a goal. Very deliberate shot. Drifts across the face. Bad miss by Dermot Brereton. Well, Hawthorne have had so many chances. Kicking 10 points on the trot in the game at one stage. And that could prove extremely costly. Just over 11 minutes of the match remaining. They've still got plenty of time to get up if they're good enough. Hannah brings the ball back into play. Aitken and Dippier to do the leaning. Dean comes over the top and takes a fine mark. But plays on. Blackwell did it well. Towards Kernahan. Stephen left it for David Kernahan. <laughs> it's like having the Cracker Brothers. David Kernahan goes in forward. Platten waiting down, can't take it. Ayres comes to meet the ball, gets the handball clear to Jenke. Puts a Schwab under a ton of pressure. Naley picks it up. Handball is a poor one back to David Kernahan. And the free kick will go the way. He's going to, in fact, bring the ball back. And it will go back to Schwab. He certainly did cop one. Blackwell over the top. David Kernahan caught. But tackled high. So an interesting debut for this young man. His father has gone over from South Australia to watch him today. Stephen Cranahan was a flyer, couldn't take the mark. Glasgow on the ground with the football. Silvani comes in and someone has been pinged for holding the ball. They have been Glasgow. Mew to clear. Wide, good chasing by Silvani. Green gets the kick away. Collins pressured by Murphy. Good play by Murphy. Sensational. Off to shine. The Blues in attack again, and Glasgow takes the mark inside 50 metres. Plays on. No one on his mark. Punch for goal. Just misses. Yeah, There's two costly misses. One by Hawthorne, one by Carlton. Almost could have sewn it up and got Burton's kick, could have got them back in, right back into it. Kick in by Langford. 17 points. The Blues lead by. Nine and a half minutes to go. In the centre. Naley. Glasgow. Blackwell played a tremendous game, Blackwell. Free kick's been paid. Glasgow back at centre half forward or between the centre and centre half forward. And Glasgow must have been just after he got rid of the ball with the hand pass out wide. And Glasgow will take the free kick. He's too far out to score. Tremendous game by David Glasgow. 24 possessions. Going for the long one. Doesn't go all that far. Oh, great mark by Stephen Kernahan. Elated the skipper. And he pulls one down 20 metres out on a slight angle. He's kicked two goals. And that's certainly worth another look. Yes, Stephen uh, Kernahan. During that second quarter, we've mentioned that he started getting back on top. And... All of a sudden, he's lining up for, for goal number three, and he's always dangerous with that marking ability. And I still believe that the most dangerous player in football is a bloke that can mark somewhere near the sticks. Especially if he can convert <laughs> with the percentage ratio that this man can. There is another one. So Kernahan telling his team to keep cool. They haven't won a practice match. Hawthorne have put in a faultless pre-season. <laughs> There's only one guy in the press went for Carlton this morning, Greg Bourne. Yep. And Steve Kernahan finishing off for his third goal and giving Carlton the breathing space they require. 23 points is the margin. Time is running out for Hawthorne. From the centre, Platten gets a hurried kick. We've just got under eight and a half minutes remaining. Lovridge has got a chance to score here. Will kick from 47 metres. Went a little further. But again, he's pulled that ball. Dunstall, one, two grabs. 
<laughs> well, some of the marking we've seen today has been a delight to watch. Yes, it has indeed. And uh, this guy has been one of them. And really, in that third quarter, he, after this fantastic jump, just jumped that bit early, used the player's body in front, eyes on the ball, and he does take a couple of gra two grabbers occasionally. He never takes his eye off the ball. A chance to goal, and he's done just that. So Hawthorne closed the gap again, but will they be beaten by the clock? And possibly that earlier inaccurate kicking. A crowd of 27,164 here at Prince's Park today. Seeing a great start to the 1988 VFL season. Once again, as Leverage kicks this ball and really does hit on the inside of the boot, and there's that early jump using the player's body in front and taking it on the second grab. Well, they've lost games from here before. They Hawthorne need three goals to win, and there's still seven and a half minutes to go. There's plenty of football left. Platten breaks away from the centre, up towards full forward. Dunstall again, gets around past Hunter, hooks the ball back to the front of the square. No mark taken. Play on, says the umpire. Dean punches it clear, not clear enough. Green, Brereton. Tries to get it to Dunstall. Shine with courage. Hard up against the boundary line. Gleeson keeps the ball in. Great play, Gleeson, and the Blues come clear. Through half back. He's got plenty of space. He can bounce the ball right up. Now he's forced to kick. The high one. Murphy takes the mark. Shepparding, says the umpire against Stephen Kernahan. And Langford will take the free kick for Hawthorne. No, he won't. Ayers will take the free kick. Collins out here on his own on centre wing. But Ayres going for the long one. Good kick by Ayres too. Centre half forward. Brereton takes the mark in front of Dean. The Hawks are never beaten. Into the forward pocket. Dunstall. Hunter the chaser. Dunstall flips it over. Loveridge. Kicks it around the corner of the front of the square. Brereton. Can't mark. Hannah there for Carlton. Platten there for Hawthorne, pushed off the ball by Hannah. Pritchard can't get the kick away. Curran can't get the kick away. Hannah there for Carlton, struggling hard. Platten to the front of the square. Here's a chance for the Hawks. Flip through from behind by Dean. Tremendous pressure stuff by Hawthorne forwards and Carlton defenders. And the difference is 16 points. Great desperation. Well, I think they've got another minute or two to kick another goal, Hawthorne. To really close that gap. Just under six minutes remaining, Malcolm. Hannah brings the ball back into play. Kernahan tries to tap it forward. Platten can't take it. Harding through, wider to Hall. Platten going past. Danger here for Carlton. Platten is clear. Into the left pocket he goes. Steadies. Shoots a goal but is off target. And another behind goes on the ball. 15 points is the margin. Again, since half time, Hawthorne have kicked six goals, 14. Five and a half minutes remain. Dean. Brereton with him. Dean gets it away. To Aitken. Needs a player going past to Rui. Couldn't take it. Platten could. Danger. Dunstall on his chest. Platten's touched the ball about eight times in the last five minutes. It's really been coming with a go. And a goal here. We have the final five minutes on our hands. He's missed it, I fear. One point. Yes, five goals, four for Jason Dunstall. It's been a pretty busy day, but I'm sure he'd be disappointed with his kicking. As the Hawthorne scoreline suggests, 13 goals, 21 points. 14 points the margin. Hannah. So often today we've seen him go straight down the middle. Let's to bring it towards the flank. Dean Brereton, Aitken at the bottom of the pack. Platten again, he's been busy. Does it beautifully, he gets away from Bradley and Aitken. Chips one in and Loveridge takes the mark. So Richard Loveridge, an opportunity now of bringing this margin back to just eight points. Yes, as Loveridge, uh, after great play from uh, John Platten again, who's been sensational in these last ten or so minutes. 
Richard Lovridge lines up. There he is now, kicking for goal and swinging back. Has it swung back enough? It has. And Hawthorne's hopes remain alive. The margin is just eight points. A situation like this, just a little bit of good luck for one side, a little bit of bad luck for the other side, and all of a sudden, the game is in the balance. And listen to the fans here at <laughs> Princess Park. Some 27,500 of them realising that Hawthorne are back in with a big chance. Loveridge caught as he tries to get it out of the middle. Silvani, the next goal is going to be the crucial one. Which side is going to get it? Harms and Mew. Kernahan. He's made an excellent conclusion coming onto the ground. He's been very lively in that forward pocket. And I'd suggest he's also a very, very good kick, like his brother, and I'm sure that he'll go very, very close with this. And what a day he would have if he kicked this. Should he kick it, it could well be the sealer, but the distance may be a problem. No, it's a lovely looking kick off the boot. What a goal! What a tip. <laughs> what a kick, and the brothers are delighted. Brother Stephen saying, well done, well done. You're talking about that lucky that you're talking about the centre of the ground then. It's a beautiful kick. Loveridge, Loveridge had the football and could have done something with it, but he didn't. You know, Carlton got it, forced it forward, arms with the kick, and David Kernahan kicks the goal. Carlton, 14 points in front, close to the final siren. Hawks away again, Schwab. Loveridge, Hall, into an open goal, and Tony Hall bangs it through for Hawthorne's 15th goal, and the difference again is eight points. Can you believe this football? No one is lying down at the moment. No one. And uh, great tap on then from Burton. Very smart. Quick thinking by Loveridge. Over to Hall, and Hall kicked truly. So still, the result hangs in the balance. Seconds ticking away. Eight points the margin. Centre bounce. A little under three minutes left. Naley's high kick for Carlton goes to the half forward line. Hugh can't hold the football, but it's going to be free kick for a push in the back. And if he can get it down there quickly enough and Hawthorne score another goal. Tries a torpedo towards Platten. In fact, past him, out wide. Kernahan should clear. Does so. Going wide towards the boundary line. Collins, first to it. Keep it in play. Does well to Tuck, who's under great pressure, but equally good play to tap it back. This time, the however, it goes over the boundary line at single. Two minutes and 15 seconds to go, Sandy. And anyone's game. Eight points the margin. Throw in. Harding and Dunlop. Loveridge. To half forward. Blackwell. Dippier Domenico. Derui. Now Platten, a soccer off the ground, dangerous however, as Bradley takes the mark. He's been out of the play for a while, Bradley, hasn't he? Crucial stage of the game, though, only two minutes to go, and he takes a fortunate mark. Defensive side of centre, kick it quickly. The ball has been taken off players in the past for wasting time. Bradley's kick covers 60 metres, up towards the Carlton forward area. Gleeson can't control it. Loveridge, Curran, chance for Mew, Mew's... Long kick out of defence will be marked by best on the ground, Wayne Blackwell. What a game he's played in his first match for 18 months. Blackwell kicks it back into the forward pocket area. Kernahan opposed by three Hawthorne defenders. Gleeson. Silvani. Goal number four. Hooks it around. It's a line ball. The goal umpire stands right beside the goal post and it's through for behind. Well, it certainly had everything to game and... Uh... You'd have to, if you're a betting man now, I guess you'd have to back Carlton. Gee whiz, you want the siren to sound. A minute to go, they lead by nine points. Back into the centre of the field. Schwab, there's Silvani, struggling for possession of the ball, and the umpire will come in and bounce. 52 seconds remaining. Margin, nine points. And I think the clock is going to beat the Hawks. They've got to get that ball down there remarkably quickly. 
Two straight kicks is what they require. Loveridge tries to get through but can't. The ball was held to him. Another bounce will take place. Just on 30 seconds remaining, Richard Loveridge uh, will be sporting one for the next couple of days. The clock will start again now as we continue our countdown. Thump down towards the Carlton attacking zone, taken by Harms across to Gleeson. Is this the final nail in the coffin? It is! And I would suggest that those Carlton supporters would be happy about today's affairs. And with very little time to go, your right hand, Carlton will win. <laughs> <laughs> what a great thump out by Dunlop. And another grab, one grab possession by Harms. And Gleeson... The experience of 30 or 40 games showing there with Adrian Gleeson as he kicks his second goal for the match. And the Blues, 15 points in front. The Siren only seconds away. Play in the centre. Kernahan out towards half forward. Silvani, can he kick a goal to cap off a great game? Murphy, a flip over as the Siren sounds and Carlton have won the 1987 Grand Final replay by 15 points, the Blues 18, 18, 126, Hawthorne 15, 21, 111. But he's still great, isn't it? Carlton kicked six goals to five in the last quarter to run out winners by that margin of 15 points. Stephen Kernahan got three goals, Silvani three, and for the Hawks, Dunstall kicked five, and Bacanara kicked three. One report from the match, Gary Ayres of Hawthorne reported for striking Craig Bradley of Carlton. An important win for the Blues, that, because uh, Carlton and Hawthorne meet only once in the home and away series before the finals, so the Hawks don't get a chance to get back at them before the finals, and you'd like to bet that they'd both be there at the end of the season. We're going to delve back into history in just a moment and take a look at opening round clashes in footy flashbacks after this. Australians like their beer, and Australia's favourite beer is Foster's. Flavour with a big capital F. It's nothing like it, is it? That's true. Australia loves a Foster's, and you know the world does too. There's nothing like a Foster's, there's nothing like a Foster's, there's nothing like a Foster's, that's true. I'd like to think I know as much about football as aquatic pools do about pools. During my football career, I stopped at nothing short of perfection when chasing my goals. Today, my approach hasn't changed. If buying a pool is one of your goals, now's the time to go for it at Aquatic Pool's fabulous Easter sale. For every solar-heated pool ordered before 6 p.m. Tuesday, Aquatic will include a spa free. See Aquatic now and be a winner. You might be surprised how much mud we get out here. It can ruin your paintwork. <laughs> Dust and road grime don't help either. But that kitten polish shines through time after time. And kitten gives lasting protection against your car's worst enemy, the sun. Sure works for me out here. For my money, you can't go wrong with kitten polishes because nothing outlasts that kitten shine. When you want to get the picture, get the sun to get the picture on the footy. Get the sun. Get the tips and get the teams. Share the hopes and share the dreams. For the news behind the scenes, it's the one. When you want to get the picture, get the sun. When your team comes out on top or when your team gets done. To share the glory and the pain of Australia's greatest game. No one else is quite the same, so get the sun. Get the picture. Milk chocolates with the thin, crisp shell. So the milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand. Wooden's Day. Girls can do anything. On family ties. <coughs> Mum's not impressed by Alex's new washing, ironing, cooking, cleaning, childbearing Barbie. 
can't play nicely, you shouldn't have played all. And right after, little Jen's got a pet frog. I'm going to race him in everything. Yeah? You want to know how to make him go 100 miles an hour? No. Stick him in a blender. Is Nudge a Kermit cruncher? There's a large green frog in the refrigerator. The best comedies. Oh, not for me, Mr. Kelly. What are you eating? Wednesday night, here on 7. Still to come in Saturday night replay, the match at Cadinia Park today between Geelong and the West Coast Eagles. But firstly, we're going to take a look at a bit of history in football. Some memorable moments and uh, memorable players as well. In opening round matches over the season, which, uh, well, we can look back on and think, uh, that's terrific, that's the history of football and the history is continuing in the mo at the moment. Uh, Dixie Marshall took a look at some of the terrific moments in round one over the years. Round one, that all-important D-Day for coaches and players. And this round in 1967 produced one of those memorable boilovers. Who is it? It's Billy Ryan, I think. Billy Ryan, mark it. What a game. Oh. Right at the goal. And there's the Geelong centre-half forward Bill Ryan kicked up. Channel 7 put together their song this year for 1988 to herald in the new season. There were some fabulous names there as well. And they, got the, they all came together for uh, our football song for the season. How about this? Who was there when they wrote the story? Who was there in the colours of glory? Who was there when a new star rose? Who was there? As each chapter closed We were there When the mighty fell We were there When they did it well Who was there When the boys became the men We were there And we'll be there again We'll be there this year We'll be there We'll be there Australian family holiday. Even better with a family car you can rely on. Nissan Pintara. Pintara easily completed the Nissan 600,000K Endura and it's backed by Nissan's two-year warranty which makes Nissan Pintara the ideal four-cylinder Australian family car. That's what my dad says, Mr Thompson. That's right mate. Nissan, building the right cars for Australia. 
Here's Munro's latest shock tactic. Have your worn shock absorbers replaced with Munro GT gas shockers, and we'll give you a voucher for up to $30, redeemable on any other servicing your car may need. But hurry. Now for about the cost of four days, you can rent any budget car up to a Commodore for seven days. That's only $2.99 for the week, because this month we've stretched the long weekend rate to last the whole week long. Even more than you expected. Thursday on Rafferty's Rules. Guilty of sin. Flat wasn't even broken into. Is it the case of racial discrimination or an insurance ripoff? No. You are on oath to tell the truth in this court. The cops. The rings were insured and the owner was Lebanese. Oh, that's unfair. The accused. The rings are the only thing that Julia and I have in the world. The wife. Love makes you believe a person and rafferty perhaps the case should be heard again before a different magistrate rafferty's rules thursday night welcome back and now to today's game at cadinia park between geelong and the west coast eagles and a crowd of 23,000 was there to watch the match and we're going to show you the last quarter action well, leading up to the game, Geelong most unlucky in losing the grand final of the Panasonic Cup last week by just a kick to Hawthorne. And controversy for the Eagles during the week with their coach, John Todd, involved in a bit of a punch-up with a radio panellist in Perth, but they came across the Nullarbor and uh, were set for the game. Well, in the first three quarters, there was nothing in it. The Cats had the first use of the breeze, but they kicked themselves out of it a bit. 3-6 in the first quarter to trail by two points. The Eagles led again at halftime by five points, and it was a seven-point lead to the Eagles at three-quarter time. So with just more than a kick in it, the last quarter was going to decide the game. Here it is from the start of the last quarter, and with me in the commentary box, Dennis Cometti and Bernie Quinlan. Last quarter started by umpire Ian Clayton. And it's just seven points the difference. The Eagles have led at every change. Burke beaten by Ashenko. Main wearing with a dash out of the middle, but he can't pick up. Langdon's there. Going backwards, but winning possession. Well played by Carl Langdon. That's great stuff. Down towards full forward, but all Geelong. And the mark to Tim Darcy. Darcy straight up the ground. As players led towards the boundary line and left space there for Troy. Going zigzag and short out of defence. Back to Darcy. He's got Voss over the top. Three possessions and oh. they've taken it about 40 metres and have now lost it. Warsfold, barrel down by uh, Morgan. Told to play on now, Glenn Dinning. He heard the whistle, was waiting for what was going to happen. And that kick's gone backwards from Warsfold. <laughs> Scrappy stuff. Pios gets some distance. Up to O'Connell, who's nudged out by Darcy. No whistle. Darcy goes back for it and tidies up for Geelong. Out he goes towards the far side to Mark Yates. Yates in the back pocket then. High kick. Hangs up in the breeze. They'll contest forward of centre wing. Ashenko comes down to take the mark there for the Eagles. He's rucked tirelessly. Goes with a short pass and Scott has taken the mark on the 50 metre line. Phil Scott. Not renowned as a goal kicker. Has an opportunity now. The breeze coming directly over his right shoulder. 9.15 to 8.14. The opening moments of the final term at Cadenia Park. The season's opener. Scott in deliberately. There goes his kick. They'll contest about five metres out. Fisted away by Burke. Through for a behind, but even they, I think, are going to count. In the context of this game, you can't give too many scores away. The lead extended to eight points now. And yet they have given the scores away. I've got it that there are three rushed behinds each. Mm. 
Bunching at centre half back, waiting for Darcy's kick in. And the first to break is Burke. Ashenko gets there, but Burke marks. Oh. Out to Scott. In a bit of trouble, but a good pass finds Hocking. Stephen Hocking. Over the wing he goes for Cameron with Zanotti. Stone and pulled off it, didn't have it. Free kick. Advantage played. Goes to Cameron. The hand pass up the ground to Bairstow. On the 50, he centres it, and Denham marks. He hasn't gained any territory, but he's out in front of goals. Don't like the little bloke's chances of kicking a goal into the breeze from 50 or just a, fr a fraction more. Sean Denham. Off the left boot. Not a bad-looking kick. He's made that easily. That proves the Cats aren't out of this yet. I thought uh, best I've made the wrong decision by kicking that ball into the centre there because uh, Denham had a kick from 50 metres out into the breeze, but as he called it, it looked as if it was uh, beyond him. But uh, he proved us all wrong and kicked a good goal and a very handy one for Geelong. Here's that kick from Bairstow. It's ended up exactly the same distance out. And here's a shot for goal from Denham. Beautiful kick on the left foot. Straight through the middle. The ball is worked forward again by the Cats. This is Cameron, one bounce. Quick hand pass across to Ablett. Ablett pulls it back across his body too far. It's gone through for a minor score. So the Cats now launching themselves at the West Coast Eagles. This game is on the line. A point the difference. They fought out a thriller on this ground last season. Geelong simply outlasted the West Coast Eagles. They won by a solitary goal. Ball to the outer side. That was not a good option. Geelong have got the numbers. Stoneham breaks away deep in the pocket, sizes it up and misses to the near side. Well, Dean Turner went to three against one. That was no a percentage. terrible kick out, wasn't it, yeah. Dennis? No Shocking option. No percentage at all. Well, he's been sacked now. Jeff Miles is the job. Now in the middle might be the ploy with this breeze. He goes for distance too. The big fellows wrestle. Burke does well, thumping it Geelong's way. Awkward bounce for Hawking. Well played by Rance. Got the deflection across to Lamb. The high kick comes towards centre wing. Schulz was up to knock it away there. Taken by Mainwaring. Gets it across to Wurzfold. He's run down from behind by Troy. The high floating kick goes towards Harford. O'Connell's been a star. Gets it to Pios. Vacant goal square. Coming back is Boss. It bounces towards the pocket. It's out of bounds at left full forward. Gee, some of the kicks for goal. Particularly, you could be critical of the kicks that that wind-assisted end have been shocking in this game. It's 9-16 apiece. Scores level, 70 each. Burke comes from behind to win the tap. Goes to Troy, his leg, no whistle. Mainwaring shoots for goal oh. and has missed from about 10 metres. It puts the Eagles in front at the five-minute mark of the last term. Troy was a bit stiff, wasn't he? Should have been a free to Troy. He was definitely legged. But Mainwaring made it hard for himself. He ran away from goals and tried to hook it hook it over his shoulder rather than uh, I think he could have had a direct shot. Here's Darcy. Denham is on for the short pass. He ignores that. Sends play towards the outer side. Yates battling with Langdon. It's going to be a free kick to the eagle. Langdon gets it. And that was quite right. Langdon using his body to work his way under Yates that time. Could go close from here. The Bree is directly behind him. If anything, it's picked up a little in the last couple of moments. Long kick down towards full forward. Pat down there. Shaws gets a fist on it and forces yet another behind. So the margin now is out to two points. There's a three. It's two. 9-18 to 9-16. And Darcy once more looking for options. None on offer. That's not a particularly good kick in either. The Eagles have gotten the numbers on the other side. It's missed by Ashenko. Burke does well. Denham can't control the ball. Down goes Hart. Opportunity now for Hocking. Hocking from half back up towards the wing for Couch. Turner's with him. And the ball goes out of play. 72 plays 70. The Eagles in front. Seven minutes played in the last quarter. Burke and Ashenko. Ashenko palms defensively. Taken by Morgan. Up to half forward. Zanotti is there with Cameron. Comes to the back. Brennan's kick smothered. Goes up and down in the one spot. Tapped out by Rance. But goal! Oh, high tackle. And the free kick goes to Geelong, to Stoneham. 
who has to come from a buried position <laughs> to take his kick. Spitting out the lumps of turf. Linda, what a mark! And Bruce Lindner, 35 metres out, not far off centre, to put the Cats in front. Mainwaring being interchanged for the Eagles. And Lindner's done the job. He's kicked five. This is special country, and these days it's easy to get to in vehicles like these. Nissan Navara 4x2 and 4x4. Navara drove all over Australia in the Nissan 600,000k Enduro and proved it can handle anything this country can dish out. Don't forget to give it some hay, Jack. <laughs> Nissan, building the right trucks for Australia. Most of the cars are appear driven by responsible drivers who check their tyres, their brakes, but shock absorbers, out of sight, out of mind. Yet worn shock absorbers severely reduce brake performance, cornering and road holding. So if your car's more than three years old, have a Munro dealer check yours now. Oh, and if you think we're using shock tactics to get you to check your shockers, you're absolutely right. to choosing a pain reliever, there's one product Australians trust more than any other, Panadol tablets from Winthrop. There are good reasons to choose Panadol for pain relief. Panadol is paracetamol, pure and gentle to the stomach. Both Panadol tablets and capsules provide effective relief from headache, pain and fever. Naturally, take Panadol only as directed and please see your doctor if pain persists. Panadol, Australia's most trusted pain reliever. It doesn't take an expert to point out that this is a pretty lousy bit of painting. Whoever did this obviously didn't prepare the surface properly. Cracks, peeling paint. If only you'd use Sally's Before You Paint Guide. Like it says here. Quick strip, spack filler, and no more gaps. Now it's ready for painting. Beautiful. With Sally's, anyone can be a great painter. Australia's killers. Some say we should wipe them out. Tuesday, meet the people who are breeding them on Beyond 2000. Plus, take a drive in the car that truly runs on the smell of an oily rag. 145 miles per gallon. Experience the sound and picture show that'll knock you off your it's seat. It's almost like sitting inside your speakers. And visit a British club where illness qualifies you for membership. <laughs> Australia's international hit show, Beyond 2000. Presented by AMP, 8.30 Tuesday on 7. Geelong, who trailed by seven points at three-quarter time, now lead it by four. We've played about nine minutes in this final term. Steve Malaxis out wide of the pack. It's taken by Worsfold. Worsfold goes long down towards half-forward. Glendinning and Boss. Boss goes back up the deflection by Glendinning. He's claimed there by the latter, and the umpire will move in to ball it up. Great body work by both players there. Mark Boss, the best and fairest at Geelong last season, as we mentioned earlier. Conceding nothing that time. Scott almost clean possession. In fact, he manages a kick out of there. Only as far as Boss. Boss deep in the pocket. Hoisted high. Bruns is in front. Worsfold fell over. Bruns was trying to make contact with him. And as a result, he lost the flight of the ball and it spilled out of bounds. That was poor football. He backed into a player who wasn't there. <laughs> he could be unlucky. <laughs> Boundary throw in. Eagles in attack. Comes to Gastev, who's just replaced Main Waring. Ball up. When Gastev came onto the ground in that second quarter, he gave them some legs burning. Yes, he's a good player, Gastev. I can, can't understand why he's been off the ground so long. Burke against Scott. Burke, beautifully to couch. Up to centre wing. Stoneham. 
Cats lifting and leading by four points at the 10 minute mark in the last quarter. Stoneham up towards half forward. Ablett never got near it. In front, Ashenko to take the mark. Ablett round his neck anyway, so it would have been a free had he not marked. Ashenko towards the centre of the ground. Phil Scott. Punch came from behind by Schultz. Scott goes in to apply the tackle on Malaxos. The crowd yells ball. No free kick. Renstead out to Rance. Centering kick. O'Connell at centre half forward. Oh, he was Ooh, off. Told to play on. Back to Gastev. He mucked that up, O'Connell. And now it's a ball up. He should have had a set shot from right in front and 50 out. Especially seeing he uh, had no idea who was around him when he took that mark. So uh, he would have been shooting for goal from about 50 metres. In fairness, perhaps a couple of the players should have told him to stop. Just that moment's hesitation. And the good work was undone. This is Buse, who's been quiet since early in the game. Swings it back towards centre wing. Bairstow goes to ground, battling with Dean Turner. This is Ablett. He decides to go on a run. May have been held without it. He's working it down towards the pocket. Lindner took one high. Down he goes. Overrunning the ball is Shenko. Knocks it back only as far as Ablett. Down he goes once more. Like a cork in the ocean. Eventually he's awarded the free kick. The play is allowed to go on. Lindner bounces one towards the square. It's kicked through by Cameron. Goal to the Cats. And Geelong sensational up there on that forward line. Ablett's really provided a bit of a spark in this last quarter, as he did in that second quarter. Great goal to Cameron. He's looking a little bit sick and sorry at the moment. Here it is. Advantage allowed. And kick up to the goal square by Lindner. Cameron gets the kick and ends up in the gutter for his uh, trouble. Back in the centre, and the Eagles taking it forward. Gastev, he threw the ball, or caught holding the ball, said the umpire. And the free kick will go to Andrew Buse. And the Cats having their best run of the game. They lead by 10 points. Up to centre half forward. Lindner again! But he wasn't oh. in front. Oh, man in front goodness. played the mark and goes to Rance. <laughs> that's, a, that's a terrible decision. That was Lindner's mark. Rance back to uh, Wurstfold. Off to Zanotti now. Zanotti down the outer side looking for Langdon. Too far for him. O'Connell, good mark. Really charged at that one. So the Eagles have to come from behind. They're kicking with the breeze, which has slackened off again. They've led it all day, but they've got to do all the work now in the last 20 minutes or so. Thumped out by Burke. Couch goes back with his hand pass. Boss up towards the centre of the ground. O'Connell centering kick. Lamb awkward half volley. Just outside 50. Dwayne Lamb across his body. Glendinning is there. I think he's lost the confidence. He's looking for the pass. It comes off to Pios, who kicks the goal. Oh. And it's back to four points, the difference. What a terrible defence again by Geelong. How many times have we seen that today where the Eagles players have ran into an open goal uncontested, not picked up by their opposition, Geelong man. And a very easy goal. And it could be costly to Geelong because uh, there are only two points ahead now. Four points ahead, sorry. Another change. Gastev back off for main wearing. Never heard a goal greeted with such silence after the controversy of Lindner's mark not awarded. There's the bounce back in the middle then. Renstead. It's very congested in there. Buse going nowhere. He's ridden into the ground by Renstead. Good tackle by the Eagles centre man. And we're going to have a ball up. Right alongside the centre circle. 11-16 Geelong. 10-18 the Eagles. Renstead over the ball. Scott sliding in. Quick hand pass comes out. It's worked forward by Burke towards half forward. McKenna. Pushed off the kick by Denham. It spills out towards the boundary. It bounces out of bounds and we'll have a throw in. 13 and a half minutes or thereabouts gone in this final term. And Geelong, who haven't led at a change today, are in front at the moment. Burke, straight down the throat of Mainwaring. He hooks it down towards left half forward. Darcy content to let the ball run across the boundary line. Two points was the margin at quarter time. Five at half time and seven at three quarter time. The Cats... Got out to lead by 10 points a couple of minutes ago. 
But that last goal has reined them in again. Burke over the ball. Scott tries to go through. Burke back to Scott. Scott on all fours. Takes a risk. Hand passes out wide. Renstead gathers the ball in space. Swings it down towards full forward. Glendinning and Boss as they've done all day. Almost holding the ball. It comes to Phil Scott on the left foot. He's put it through. Great goal. This is special country, and these days it's easy to get to in vehicles like these. Nissan Navara 4x2 and 4x4. Navara drove all over Australia in the Nissan 600,000k Enduro and proved it can handle anything this country can dish out. Don't forget to give it some hay, Jack. <laughs> Nissan, building the right trucks for Australia. Now, there's a different kind of Top 40. Melbourne's Top 40 Display Homes. 40 truly inspired home styles, from spacious executive residences to compact family villas, with the latest in kitchens, bathrooms and innovative ideas. Melbourne's Top 40, sponsored by the Master Builders Association and State Bank, is in two locations, Taylor's Lakes and Roeville. So don't miss it. Top 40, the biggest independent collection of original home designs in Melbourne. Most of the cars are a pair of driven by responsible drivers who check their tyres, their brakes, but shock absorbers, out of sight, out of mind. Yet worn shock absorbers severely reduce brake performance, cornering and road holding. So if your car's more than three years old, have a Munro dealer check yours now. Oh, and if you think we're using shock tactics to get you to check your shockers, you're absolutely right. You get a run for your money When they jump from the starter's gate You get a run for your money When they thunder down the straight The odds are so much better Try your luck and see You get a run for your money On the TAB You get a run for your money Run for your money You get a run for your money on the TAB Slowly but surely, we've watched the prices of most things climb higher and higher and higher. But this year, changes to the VFL club membership prices means that the cost of going to a VFL game has actually come down and down and down. Ask your club or the VFL about club membership tickets and don't just barrack for your club, support it. Wildly fluctuating final term. Geelong came from behind, raced out to a 10-point lead, and they've lost that lead again. It's the Eagles back by two points. Scott, hand pass astray, goes to Zanotti. Well, Malaxos waited for it a bit. A soccer off the ground by Zanotti, luckily into the midriff of Malaxos. Darcy trying to find a big climb for the second time in the game. Chance for Glenn Dinning. Lost control of it, though. Well played by Boss. Oh, oh trouble here for Schultz. Bolted out of his hand. But the slap up the ground by Lamb is picked up by Mark Voss. Good pass by him, finding Bairstow just behind the centre. The running Bruns going past. Steers the pass to Lindner. But Ishenko in front takes the mark. Plays on with the hand pass to Malaxos. Has to wait for it again. Zanotti bolting away. Worst fold. Centering to Turner. And a good strong mark. Dean Turner. Eagles leading by two points. We've played about 16 and a half minutes in the last term. David Hart in space. Drives a long kick for Glenn Dinning. Almost. He's got it again. Hand pass up to O'Connell, who kicks his fifth. Tremendous play by Ross Glenn Dinning. He's been great up there at full forward. A very good move by uh, John Todd to play Glenn Dinning at full forward. He's had about 10 shots at goal himself. Poor return, only kicking one but uh, he's provided a few opportunities players going by. Here it is again. Handball out to O'Connell. O'Connell kicks his fifth, and the Eagles now eight points in front. Back in the middle. Glenn Dinning, playing like the champion he is, has stretched the lead for the Eagles to eight points. Paul Couch, kick number 21 coming for him, provided he decides to kick. Not much happening for him down the ground. 
Goes for distance towards half forward. Stoneham, that was a strong mark in from the side. He felt that one too. Rance making him earn it. Stoneham lays it off. It's taken by Bruns. He hooks it back for a more central situation. Ashenko has been a tower of strength in defence. Takes the mark to Miles. Miles in the back pocket. Swings it out wide. Can Hart get there? Yes, he can. He takes the mark just inside the boundary. Burke's off and Flanagan's back on. We've played about 18 minutes of the term now. Hart. High kick towards centre wing. If the Eagles get the next goal, I sense they've got the game. Flanagan is up. Juggled mark is paid. Conversely, of course, Geelong now. Their last roll of the dice. They need a score. He's on centre wing. He wants to centre the ball to Bruns. An amazing decision. An amazing mark. <laughs> oh, very lucky to get away with that. It needed nearly the mark of the day to help out Flanagan then. Neville Bruns up towards centre half forward. Nobody there. Nobody flying for Geelong. Making it easy for McKenna. And he's taken about six or seven marks, about 15 possessions. Pretty good debut for the youngster, for the Eagles. Goes out wide to Miles. Down the outer side he goes. Bit of wrestling going on, an arm holding. And the free kick Geelong's way. Glenn Dinning doesn't like the decision. It goes to Mark Voss. Stoneham. Thump comes to the front. Hart. All Eagles here. Renstead. Gets through them easily. Goes long. One out is O'Connell. Oh, almost. Glendinning in front. And at last he's kicked a goal. He's got his second. <laughs> a big grin from Ross Glendinning. He'd almost forgotten how. Yeah, that's two goals eight and one out of bounds to Ross Glendinning. But more importantly for the Eagles, they've gone to a 14-point lead. And... All the plays going their way. Here it is, up into the forward line. O'Connell nearly took a great one-hander. Ross Glendinning roving very well. Puts it through for his second. The Eagles lead by 14 points. Play restarts. Geelong working up into a breeze. It's going to be a tough task from here. Renstead only as far as Bruns. Bruns draws a man. Denham... Denham should have kicked at Goldwood. This is Turner. Turner breaks down towards right half forward. Pulls it back intended for Ablett. Behind a chance for Scott. Zanotti will be first back and he's content to run it through. They can afford to take such luxuries now. 11-17 to 13-18. This has been a fine performance by the Eagles. Worsfold's got it. Wersfold kicks it towards the outer side. Three on one out there. Troy needs to get it across to support. Well played by Lamb. He's a strong customer. He applied that tackle in such a manner that the man couldn't get it across Troy to Morgan. Just twisted his body as he grabbed him. We've got a throw in on the outer side. Ashenko's in front. Stoneham does well. Knocked on by Denham. But the Eagles get in the road there. Thumped towards the boundary line. Troy leads in the race. Hart is there too. And another throw in upcoming on that other side. Hushed crowd now. They sense perhaps it's got away from Geelong. The Cats, who started this final term with a surge, up they go. Stoneham wins it down. Taken by Scott. Scott pulls it back towards the pocket. It bounces awkwardly for the veteran down there, Michael Turner. Zanotti back over oh. his head. Dean Turner goes down. He was buried by the man arriving at the rate of knots there, Bearstow. And it's going to be a free kick to Dean Turner. Well, Pesto got rid of the ball, but he did get rid of Turner as well in a front-on charge. And a free kick to the Eagle from the back pocket. Seeing a few stars at the moment. 13 points the difference. We've ticked past the 20-minute mark in the last term. Kick by Turner. Oh, great mark at the back taken by Lindner. Hasn't he pulled down some big ones today? He gets around Glenn Dinning on the mark. Has a good gallop at them and kicks to the goal square. Ablett with a charge. No mark. Scott in front. Couldn't handle. Free kick given away again in defence. Play on. Advantage. And now the Eagles break out of defence through Warsfold. Up towards the centre of the ground. Langdon. Past him it goes to Yates. Into Schultz. Sweeping hand pass wide for Flanagan. Oops. Look out. <laughs> a comedy he's lost it it goes to lamb lamb to center half forward too high for glenn dinning but easy for scott and i reckon a straight kick from 50 right in front will nearly seal it for the eagles 
It'll make the margin 19 points, and probably with about uh, seven or eight minutes to play, more than three goals for Geelong into the breeze would be a little difficult. Scott's kicked one in this last quarter. This to seal it. It's close. It draws applause from his teammates. And the Eagles lead by 19 points. Five goals to three for the Eagles in the last quarter. There were just two more behinds added in the last seven minutes. And the Eagles ran out winners by 21 points for only their second ever win in Victoria and a debut win for coach John Todd in his first game in the VFL. For the Eagles, Michael O'Connell kicked five goals and for Geelong, Lindner kicked five goals. And the result of the other game, the third game played today at the start of the split round, Essendon murdered North Melbourne. They led by 57 points at quarter time after kicking 11 goals to one and ran out winners by 82 points, doubling North score. For Essendon, Salmon kicked seven goals and Harvey kicked three. And for North Melbourne, McRae kicked three goals. Coming up in the Saturday night replay, one of the best sports stories for the year. You couldn't wish for anything better. The sports editor of the Sunday Press, Scott Palmer here, with a follow-up to the John Todd story. You saw it first on the grid at Adelaide. Now, the exciting Nissan Pulsar Vector Triple S is at your Nissan dealers, ready for you to drive. Nissan Pulsar Vector Triple S, S, S. Performance that will make you glad to be behind the wheel. Style that tells you this one's special. Nissan Pulsar Vector Triple S, S, S. Not your normal kind of sedan. Nissan know-how. Building the right cars for Australia. <laughs> that was brilliant. It was the best thing I've ever seen for absolute ages. It's leaving Melbourne audiences. There were everything going. Like, it was wild. It was almost speechless. Unbelievable. Fantastic. Stunning. Super. Wonderful. It was brilliant. Fabulous. I'm coming Give again. Me. The Benson and Hedges Company and Shoko present Starlight Express, the musical spectacular. Season must end April 14. So hurry. Book at Bass or phone 11 500 now. Ignition, fuel, runway clear, tracked on. Wild to tower, tracked on power. Now for about the cost of four days, you can rent any budget car up to a Commodore for seven days. That's only $2.99 for the week. Because this month, we've stretched the long weekend rate to last the whole week long. There's only one place in the world where you can see prehistoric creatures without sacrificing your creature comforts. Nowhere else can you see living waterfalls or an oasis of ancient palms that no longer live anywhere else. Nowhere else can you fish for ancient secrets and outwit one of the world's smartest fish. Nowhere else has one of the largest wildlife populations in the world. With a wildlife all of its own, Nowhere else offers such a choice of hospitality in a land that can sometimes be quite inhospitable. If it was overseas, you'd go out of your way to discover it. Yet the biggest discovery is that it's all right here. Come now to Australia's Northern Territory. There's nowhere in the world like your own territory. Here it is. But I've got to tell you, it's different. Yes, it's different. And it's delicious. McDonald's fillet of fish. Golden cheese with a delicious, lightly crumbed fillet of premium quality fish and tartar sauce, a fresh steamed bun. It does something to me. Makes you want one, right? That's it. That's it. McDonald's fillet of fish. It's different. And it's delicious. Welcome back. I hope you've enjoyed Saturday Night Replay, but still a bit to come in the program. Our newsbreaker, Scott Palmer, sports editor of the Sunday Press. Scott, an amazing story you have for tomorrow. Well, there was a bombshell in the rooms down at Cadinia Park tonight, uh, Drew, when uh, the West Coast Eagle players met and decided to put their own coach on trial in Perth tomorrow over that misdemeanour of slapping the uh, panellist in Perth, the radio panellist, on Thursday. They're going to hold a mock court 
and they're going to discuss a penalty for John Todd. The first time in the history of football it's ever been done. They feel that uh, it's deserving because uh, they're told to behave themselves in public and on the field, and Todd has to do the same. Big Alex Ishenko, who's been reported three times last year and even in the practice match last week, has appointed himself judge of Todd. Uh, he, he's been told that if he gets reported again, he will face the heaviest fine in the history of a, uh, club football. He'll probably get a $10,000 fine. So he said, if I'm going to cop that, Todd's going to cop me on the bench tomorrow. So it is a, a revolutionary system where the, the coach goes on trial and the players judge his verdict. What sort of fine do you reckon he'd get? Well, they're talking about a $500 or a $1,000 fine. But um, I think that just, just the uh, humiliation of going up there before the players is going to sort of uh, be part and parcel of the penalty. That's a big start to his VFL career. Well, a uh, real big start. We all said that he was going to cause an impact on football. Well, he's done so in his first, first day. But uh, it's history making, you know, they're going to sit around, they're going to pick a jury. Oshenko will probably sit up there and be the judge and they'll discuss the evidence and then they'll uh, adjourn and give a verdict. And Todd, I hope he gets plenty, I, I really do. Are you a pretty imposing sort of a judge too, Oshenko? <laughs> Oshenko? Well, he's got the lo longest rap sheet in the league, apparently. He's, uh, for one year, he's been up there about four or five times. So he knows what uh, tribunals are all about and he'll conduct it in his way. So it's a big news tomorrow on the front page and the back page of the best sports paper in town, the Sunday Press. And just quickly, some injuries for the rest of the weekend. Yes, well, uh, at the press we've also got uh, the big injury, of course, is to Kevin Walsh, who uh, has smashed the side of his face. He went to hospital tonight with uh, fractured cheekbones. And, of course, the Swans uh, have lost three more players overnight. Uh, they're going to be devastated on Monday. They've lost uh, Thrip. They've lost... Uh, um, I can't think of the uh, Mitchell, yeah. and um, they've put in um, a couple of young players for the first game, Drew. Bad start for them. Thanks, Scott. I don't think I'll be wrapping the fish and chips on your front page tomorrow. No, Just it's kidding. a great paper. Yeah. Just a reminder about the programs coming up over the weekend. We've got sport from 9 o'clock until 5 tomorrow, and we start with Sports World, and don't forget the footy panel between 11 and 12 with guests in the footy. of Hawthorne. Really severely hurt by injury in there. Right stammer. Now Stephen Silvani of Carlton. Over the back to Black. Jason Dunstall of Hawthorne. Oh, oh, what a mark by Dunstall. A high kick. Another one Dunstall from Jason Dunstall. Dunstall. A little further. And a but third again, from Jason Dunstall. Dunstall, one, two grabs. Geelong's Up Tim forward, Darcy. Forward. Oh, oh, big fly by Darcy. What a mark by Tim Darcy. His teammate, Bruce Lindner. He's kicked it about, uh, well, 70. Oh, oh. Lindner! What a mark by Bruce Lindner! Out to Windy Hill now, Simon Madden of Essendon. <laughs> For North Melbourne, Jim Cracker. And for Essendon, Terry Danaher. Mark of the Week was brought to you by SIO, your state insurance office. And the player who's selected by a panel for Mark of the Year wins an SIO $5,000 investment bond. Yes, some great marks there. Actually, you were spot on, weren't you? You said, oh, Silvani's was a good mark. But then you said, uh, Jason.